Hi everyone, so uh, I'm back again to do a, a different flower for you. Uh, this time I'm going to do a lace cap hydrangea. Uh, I found some cutters on online that were fairly cheap, so if anybody wants to have a go at this, if you look on online, you'll be able to find these. I actually got them from AliExpress, so as long as you're not in a hurry in getting them, um, these were quite reasonable price. So anyway, we'll get on with it and start with the information that we need. Right, so first of all the um, equipment that I'm using are these. This is an all-in-one cutter. Uh, I do have cutters for doing them uh, separately. You will find other people on uh, on here that have done them with uh, separate petal cutters but I just thought for anybody that doesn't want to that's having difficulty with wiring things and things like that or time or whatever uh, the case may be uh, this particular type you might find easy because there's a lot of these sort of cutters around and these sort of flowers as well come in handy for putting on a cake uh, directly without wiring anything so they're totally edible so the cutter that I'm going to use is the small one because I found that the big one in this set a bit big but I mean it all came as a set when I bought these I haven't tried the big one um, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to show you how to make the uh, centers there's a lot of buds in this uh, flower and I've done a lot of sprays like this um, which I've already wired together so I'm going to show you how I made these buds also as well for the center of the flower um, there's a small round centre in the centre of the flower so you need to make that first and that needs to dry before you do anything else so if we start off with that first of all I'm only going to use a I'm going to use a 26 gauge wire because your petals are going to go directly onto this so what you need to do is to get the tiniest tiniest little hook on the top as small as you can get it so that you've got this to anchor into your paste Now this paste I have to work this before I can get it using because it's a uh, paste that I've made and it can be quite sticky to start off with so I find it a good idea to rub some white fat onto your hand so it doesn't stick and then get that working so that it's ready right so that's okay it doesn't take long now you need a small ball of paste that's far too big so you need to, you need a really tiny ball of paste for this for the center so it needs to be minute pop your wire into it I need to make my hook a little bit smaller because otherwise it's going to miss there so it anchors down into the paste like that and then just bring your paste over the top of the wire so that it doesn't come back out again like that. sorry I'm going off camera again I'll just adjust that a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here there we are it's a bit better and pop that to one side to dry now your buds you want a slightly larger piece ball of paste I've got some here that I haven't dusted yet you can do these in various different sizes so you can see that's probably slightly larger than the bud that I've done there but this will do a larger bud which will make it easier for you to see on camera um, so for that uh, I've got a 20 a, a, sorry a 30 or a 32 gauge wire you don't need anything heavy because you're only using small bits of paste so these are going to be wired together into a into a group so Again, like you did before with the centre, bring your wire down through so that your hook anchors into the paste. Bring that down. I'm not going to bother messing about with the top of it because the next thing I need to do now is divide this into four. The little tiny flowers that are in the centre of the... Um, if I can get one. 
there we are I've got one that I haven't I haven't coloured this one yet but this is these are the flowers that I've done so I've used a made a pulled flower to go in the centre of the uh, in the little groups in the centre most of it is buds so I'm going to use the small end of my um, cutting wheel and just bring it up like that then go to the other side opposite and bring that over to meet it there like that And then turn that round and then in between there I'm going to make another groove there going that way it's a bit like the top of a hot cross bun and like that so you've divided that into four like that and then you can set that to one side to dry right now then I'm going to do go straight on to the uh, little uh, flowers that I've done I have a picture here, here of a, a lace cap hydrangea there if you can see that and you can see the centre of it is ma mainly uh, buds in there but I saw some at the garden centre whilst I was there today and they do have these little flowers that come out from the buds in the centre which are much smaller than the outside flowers so those are the outside flowers that's the inside flower so I'm just going to pop that to one side there so how I made that was I started off with a, a small ball of paste that's too big make that even smaller and these are quite small and fiddly to do so uh, I use my method with the um, with the pulled method using your ball tool so a little hook on the end of your wire so that's all ready and start off with your ball of paste and then roll it on one side into a cone and then the top piece then I'm going to get my silk veining tool that I'm going to use later on on the petals into the centre and then just push it against your fingers just to open it out a little bit like that okay so once you've done that then you want you straight nail scissors and cut into one side cut into the other side and then cut in between that that side and that side like that so you've got four cuts in it I'm just going to get rid of that out of the way that one wants to go up there and keep my wire where I can see it there. and get your tool pad now I'm just going to keep my finger on there so it doesn't move and then you want a small ball tool I'm going to use the large end on the small ball tool and just pull out the flowers you may have difficulty seeing this because it with it being white on white but I'll uh, pick it up and show you when I've done it just pull it out like that this is the easiest way of doing pulled flowers I used to hate doing these when I first do it started doing flowers because I could never get them right doing it with your fingers but I find that if you're doing it with the ball tool you have a lot more control over it right so we've now got to that stage you can see that so you've got your four petals there doesn't matter if they're not even because uh, I'm going to uh, straighten that up when uh, when I've got the wire in so the next step now is to put your wire in so down the centre just come out a little bit of the side there just bear with me lost a bit of paste off of that go back in again that's it bring it down so that your hook just anchors into the paste disappears and then roll it with your four fingers like that you don't want to go down too far because I don't have a long back on them but because the sh sugar you do need something there to uh, anchor your paste in so the next job is now go back to your silk veining tool and then on your finger roll from one side to the other side just to get a little bit of veining into your petals also thin thins out any thick pieces that you've got there that you've missed with your ball tool 
and thins them out like that and then with your finger and your thumb just nip the ends together like that so like I say it doesn't matter if your petals are not even by the time you've done this it just makes them look a bit better so you end up with a flower like that so then you set that to one side to dry so you've got your buds you've got your centers and you've got your little filler flowers now i've done loads of these centers and you'll see when i come to put the whole thing together uh, what i've done is i've dusted some with a uh, the colour of the flower and then some of them in green so they sort of all don't ripen all at the same time in the one that's in the picture it's mostly green there's not there's just a few that have got a bit of colour there but uh, that's the way I've done it anyway I was going to do some leaves but I couldn't find my veiner and uh, to make some leaves so I'm going to leave that I'm just going to do the flower for now but there again I mean if you were doing it on a cake then one of these flowers you wouldn't need anything else with it because it's so such a big head that um, one flower is ideal so even though you're putting a lot of work into it you're not doing loads of flowers for it so the next step now is to do the flower part have already got a center ready dried that's one of the dry ones so we'll get that out so roll out your paste and I've picked some color up there I'll just get a bit of fresh paste because that's got some pink in it so uh, I don't want that wrong paste One of these days I'll get round to straightening my work station up here so that I don't have so many things on. That's why I'm picking the colour because I was dusting all my sample bits yesterday ready for this demonstration. So there we are. Just make sure my uh, rolling pin is clean. Just give it a wipe over with some kitchen roll so that uh, that's probably where the colours come from actually right I'm not going too thin because I'm going to put it in the veiner and that will stretch it a bit more so uh, I don't want to stretch it too much cut out your shape pull away the paste I think we've missed a little bit there. Let's get my little. Yes, I have. I've missed a little bit there in between those two petals. Just pull that out. There we are. Now, the next thing I need to do, because I'm going to uh, attach this to the center. Just putting glue on your um, on your back might not be quite enough. So what I do is I make, get a little bit of the flower paste, and then if you get your glue, put some glue in the flower paste, and then with your spatula just work that together, so it softens the paste and makes a sticky substance. If you're going to repair a petal that you've broken or anything like that, you'd use this method to repair it because it makes the joint a lot stronger so what I need to do then is to get the uh, center of the flower that I've got here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of that around the base of the center like that just get rid of that off of there because we don't need that for anything I go through a lot of kitchen roll doing this. I should have saved the other piece to uh, to do this, but I'll just clean that off. I wouldn't clean that off if I was doing a lot of flowers, but I'm only doing one here because I'm doing my blue peter bit, having everything all ready. So we'll just pop that to one side. There's the veiner. Let's get your flower petals off of your worktop. 
Now if you look at the actual outside flowers you'll find that um, a couple of the petals are smaller than the other side. So just pop that over, give that a press. <coughs> Now if you have difficulty getting flowers out you can always use your dusting bag to dust your vena before you put your flower in. It saves any mishaps breaking petals and things like that you know. It all depends on how good you are with them. There we are so that's the flower out of the mould and then Just pop your centre down into there like that, bring your centre down and then make sure that's attached on the back and then what I do is I dry them upside down so I just leave it so it naturally drops down a little bit like that so you get your shape, I'll show you that other one that's dried like that. So I'm just going to pop that into some foam, bend your wire down and then onto your foam on the edge like we did with the roses. That's that bit done. So there again, you can leave all those bits and pieces to dry until you're ready for them. And then you can start getting onto your next stage of colouring and assembling. So, just get rid of the glue out of the way, get rid of all my bits and pieces, get some, now I've already got some kitchen roll here with the colours that I've used. Now I've two, used two colours here uh, from Edible Art, I've used Tropical Lime, which I've used for dusting the, uh, some, a lot of the buds and the backs of the flowers, and I've also used another colour, this one called Black Currant. Uh, which comes from the black top range in um, edible art. These are actually non-edible colours but since you're making sugar flowers to take off of a cake if you're going to put them on a cake then just tell people if you use something that's not edible on it. The whole point of making the flowers anyway is not for somebody to eat them but to uh, keep them as a keepsake afterwards so hopefully they're not going in anybody's mouth. So I've got two brushes here, the one that I've used for my dark colour and one that I've used for my green. And then we'll get on to the buds to start off with. We've got one or two here that I've already dried. These are all dried ones. See if I've got any more on there. That one's one as well. There we are. So I'll start off with the just the green buds. So if you just dust all over your bud with some of the green colour just make sure you get into the grooves and do a couple of those with the green and then we'll do some with the <coughs> black current now with some of them I do these at different stages so I do some that have just got a touch of colour you could even do these with a bit of green on if you wanted and some that are a bit deeper that's the deeper one that I'm going to do so what you could do is to uh, if you wanted to I haven't done it with my others but you could dust some green onto your buds at the base like that and then just dust it with some of the black currant just so it looks as though it's just changing colour. I haven't done it with any of mine but that's something that you could do with yours. Have I got any more buds in there that I can dust? Let's have a look. That's a soft one. Yeah we'll just dust these. So just dust those with some green where's my green brush there we are nope that's the wrong one I 
as I've said before while I'm doing this if you've got any comments about any of my videos or anything you'd like to see me do uh, please post in the comments below a lot of people aren't doing that so come on guys uh, start posting some ideas because when you've been when you've done a lot of flowers and I've done quite a few videos it gets a bit hard to think what you're going to do for people so if there's anything you'd like to see any different kinds of orchids or anything like that cause lots of different varieties uh, then please ask away and I'll try and fit it in for you uh, also if you want any information about anything that I'm using as well um, please get in touch and uh, and let me know what it is you want to know and don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well because that's what keeps us all going on here um, now onto the flower I'm not going to bother with any green at the back because you don't really see it when it's in the spray anyway so what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to um, dust from the edges down You don't need to go right to the bottom because if you look at the petals there is a little bit of uh, white showing on the actual petals so I don't go right to the base and then on the back just be very gentle with these because there's no wires in them you can easily break your petals off I've done quite well so far and I'm probably speaking too soon I haven't broken a petal off but it's always a first time you never know what's going to happen and it'd be just my luck while I'm filming to break one and as I say to people when I'm doing these videos if you haven't heard it before or you've heard it a hundred times I don't edit out any mistakes that I make like that I leave them in because if it's something that I can repair or put right then I can show you how to do it right I've got a smaller brush here this is a sable brush with some of the green and I'm just going to put that into the center of the flower I think I need a bit more color I've run out on here I like this range of colors because they do lots of different ra uh, ranges in these because they do a lime then they do a tropical lime and then I think there's one after that as well I can't remember which one that is there we are so that's the centre done with the green and then uh, you the uh, black currant on the outside of the petals so that's those and then also as well I've got one of the uh, central flowers somewhere and I'll find what I've done with it there it is Nope. that's the one I've just done is it on there I've lost my flower for colouring somewhere oh, I got it out didn't I there it is so with this one I'm just going to give it a bit of dust with a bit of green just at the base on that and then into the black current again and just give it a little bit of colour on the very edges I'm not bothering with any green in the centre of this because it's too small for anybody to notice that so uh, it's the overall effect really that people are looking for because if as long as they can recognise the flower that you've done then you've done a good job A lot of my students used to say that when they've gone home and husband said oh that's a nice rose or that's a nice carnation or whatever flower it is that you've done they always feel really chuffed because somebody's actually recognized it and it makes you feel a lot a lot better about your work especially if you're just starting out and you haven't done anything before that little bit of um, a pat on the back uh, makes your achievement feel even better so I'm just going to pop that to one side now so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got some half width uh, now green tape here what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to tape down the uh, 
flower that I've just done there because that's on a white wire so I'm just going to tape down with that to cover the wire so you can't have a one white wire and then a load of green wires the others are on a darker green but you're not really going to see that part anyway so uh, and I'm just going to start taping then about just under halfway down the flower and then get all your buds together get them in a group like that get all your heads at the same level just pop that round the other side there pop that in there between those green ones and then put those in at the same level and then once you've got them all fastened together then you can sort them round your your flower or put it up put put it so the flowers on the edge whichever way you want to do it tape down to the bottom and then adjust your your buds then in your spray like that so you've got all these little groups like that and just pop that to one side we'll get rid of the kitchen roll and then if you get all your bits and pieces that you've made all your flowers and everything all ready to put together into the spray and you see I've, I've done different groups I've done some with maybe an odd pink one in and, uh, and some with an odd flower uh, some I don't think no I haven't done anything it's, yes I've done some that are uh, they're all different of these I always talk to myself when I'm doing stuff like this you know it's uh, drives people mad but that's what becomes of living on your own <laughs> when you've nobody to talk to but the cat then uh, you know you start talking to yourself right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start about a third of the way down start the tape off and I'm just going to bend that out a little bit and start adding in all your groups of buds together just bring them out because they all grow in groups like this on the on the flower so just make sure you get them all at the same level now if you find it easy you can make when you get to the outer ones you can start um, putting them slightly higher because when you bend it out then it'll come it needs to be flat as the head if that makes sense so on the outer ones when you start coming further out you need to um, go slightly higher so that when you bend it out they're all at the same level it makes sense when you've got everything together just bend it out and so you can see where it where it's going then uh, that probably make it a bit easier to follow what I'm doing so once you've got them all together into the spray then you can open it out as you want and see where you're at with it right so I'm going to tape down to the bottom with this you're going to end up with a thick center on this because you've got a lot of pieces together on this but because they grow on wooden stems anyway or woody stems <coughs> <coughs> excuse me it sort of adds to the way that the plant grows right so that's the center of the flower then the next pet thing is to add in your flowers for the outside rim of the the flower the main flower so we start putting in the flowers so if you bend them out a little bit i'm just going to bend them up a little bit so they're a bit flatter so if you bend it out and then bend it up a little bit they don't do that in the actual flower but they obviously they they're going to be 
quite flat so if you do them slightly higher up and then just pull it out and then bend it back in again sometimes when you're doing sugar flowers you have to use artistic license in order to get the effect that you want so this is the way of doing it because people are looking at the the flower from the top there you're not going to show all this underneath just going to put that in there like that. bring my tape back up again I'm drifting down a little bit there last time I did a lace cap hydrangea I didn't put enough uh, centres in so it looked a bit bare but this is looking better than the one that I did last time but it's like everything else that you do in sugar craft you learn as you go along and you find better ways of doing things to make your life an awful lot easier Right, where have we got a space that wants to come out and up like that? Got a gap there, that'll go in there. And then I can tape down There we are, a lace cap hydrangea. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what I've done here today. And uh, like I say, come back and uh, see what I'm going to do next. Uh, there's plenty of other videos on my channel to have a look at uh, with all the different flowers that I've done. And as I said before, if you've got any comments about anything or anything you'd like to see, then please get in touch and uh, I'll try and uh, fit them in. I'm always looking for ideas for something different to do. So anyway, take care, stay safe, have a good day.